In Engeland is het voetbal een essentieel deel van het leven van de werkende mensen. Veel voetbalclubs zijn ontstaan uit arbeidersorganisaties. Maar de laatste jaren zijn er steeds meer superrijken die de clubs opkopen voor veel geld. Maar de mensen pikken dat niet altijd. Toen een rijke Amerikaan, Malcolm Glazer, in 2005 Manchester United opkocht, kwamen 2000 supporters samen om te protesteren en een nieuwe club op te richten. Well, a, a one member, one vote organisation, uh, whereby we all have an equal say in, in what we do. Uh, we're open to everybody and discriminate against none. We uh, want to integrate with the, the community around here, which is, it's not the wealthiest part of Manchester here. There, are, there is poverty in this area. You know, it's a fantastic achievement and it just shows you what ordinary football fans can do. Because what people were saying, you'll never do it. It'll be over by Christmas. How can you do it? You're not businessmen, you don't know, you've, you've not got fan financial people, how can you do it? And we did it. And it just shows you sometimes that, that believe in yourself, believe in what ordinary football fans can do. And it's, it's run by the club, for, by the fans, for the fans. And the, the, early, the early last year we opened this fantastic ground that we pretty much built from money that we, uh, we all contributed. We've still got work to do yet, but we're pretty happy with what's, what's going on now. But here I'm treated as a, 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 I'm a fan and I'm an owner. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot better to feel that, you know. And we're in a triple dip recession, whatever you want to call it, as a result of greedy bankers. And we see greedy footballers and, and, and they're earning more in a week. There's some people earning a lifetime and these austerity cuts are coming in and the welfare state it's all being all being chipped away, the NHS, the police and and yet yeah, the real people if you want to rob a bank these days, don't get a balaclava and a shotgun. Get a thousand pound suit and go and work in the city. You can rob billions of pounds and you get bailed out and you don't even go to prison. Manchester throughout its history has been a radical city. It's a birthplace of the trade union movement. It's a birthplace of, of the suffragettes who got women the vote in, in Great Britain. And so it's a typically Mancunian thing to say, we're not going to take this and we're going to do something about it. So it's, it's having a belief, and it's having a belief that there is another way for football to be run by the fans, for the fans, about the fans. And because what you've got now is you've got working class people who are now priced out of football. They are priced, they cannot afford. Instead of being a birthright, it's a birthday treat to take your kids to football. And for instance, Old Trafford has become a tourist destination. The, the big match experience is in a pub watching it. It's not actually sitting, singing, standing up. It's not actually watching that game. It's via television. Uh, and obviously the, the, the television pay the money. He, he, in English, he who pays the piper calls a tune. If these rich owners go, who well, pays them? And the club becomes unprofitable. And one day the bubble will burst. The days of these big television deals will go. And there'll, be, there'll have to be a leveling like there was with the banks. Will there be a collapse? And we, then, when that day comes, we can say, "I told you so."